25 Respiratory Nursing Practice Questions 1. A 37-year-old female patient has been newly diagnosed with asthma and is admitted at the respiratory ward. She is prescribed with albuterol, Preventil. It is important to inform the patient that this drug commonly causes a. Fatigue b. Nasal congestion c. Shakiness d. Low platelet count Answer, c. Shakiness Rationale, shakiness is the most common side effect of albuterol, Preventil. Other side effects of albuterol include hypokalemia, dizziness, nausea, palpitations, and muscle cramping. 2. A 22-year-old male patient started to have symptoms of acute rhinitis. The nurse should recognize that one of the symptoms of this medical condition is nasal drainage in which color? A. Clear. B. Yellow. C. Green. D. Gray. Answer. A. Clear. Rationale. Acute rhinitis involves excessive nasal drainage that is clear in color. If it is yellowish or greenish, then infection of the sinuses or other parts of the respiratory system can be suspected. 3. A respiratory patient develops respiratory distress syndrome and is rapidly deteriorating. The patient is now intubated and is started on mechanical ventilation. While doing nursing rounds, the mechanical ventilator's high pressure alarm starts. All of the conditions can cause this alarm, except a. A kink on the ventilator tubing. B. Disconnection of the ventilator tube. C. Mucus plug. D. Water leaking into the tube. Answer. B. Disconnection of the ventilator tube. Rationale. A high pressure alarm in a mechanical ventilator could mean that there is a presence of mucus plug, water in the tube, or a kink in the tubing. It can also be triggered by pulmonary embolus or bronchospasm, as well as biting or coughing on the endotracheal tube. A disconnected ventilator tubing can trigger a low-pressure alarm. 4. A patient came to the emergency unit with shortness of breath. Upon auscultation, the nurse begins to suspect right-sided pneumothorax due to which of the following findings? A. Absence of breath sounds in the right thorax. B. Bilateral crackles. C. Wheezing in the right thorax. D. Pleural friction rub in the right thorax. Answer. A. Absence of breath sounds in the right thorax. Rationale, there is no air exchange occurring in the affected lung when there is pneumothorax. Due to damaged and deflated alveoli. This makes the breath sounds absent in the affected lung. 5. A 56-year-old female patient is admitted due to exacerbation of COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The nurse prioritizes the nursing diagnoses based on their urgency and importance. Which of the following nursing diagnoses should be prioritized? A. Anxiety. B. Risk for infection. C. Impaired gas exchange. D. Activity intolerance. Answer. C. Impaired gas exchange. Rationale. All the options are crucial for the care of a patient with COPD and exacerbation. But the most important nursing diagnosis for this patient is impaired gas exchange, related to airflow obstruction. As this includes deteriorating oxygen levels in the lungs, which is considered a medical emergency compared to the other three nursing diagnoses. 6. A 66-year-old male patient has a chest tube drainage following a left lung pneumonectomy. Which of the following nursing actions is included in the care of a chest tube drain? A. Milk the chest tube every 2 to 3 hours. B. Encourage the patient to do deep breathing and coughing exercises. C. Clamp the chest tube every 4 hours. D. Monitor the water seal chamber for any fluctuations. Answer. B. Encourage the patient to do deep breathing and coughing exercises. Rationale. A one-sided pneumonectomy puts the unaffected lung at high risk for pneumonia. To prevent this, the patient needs to be encouraged to perform deep breathing and coughing exercises. Since the left lung has been removed, there will be no fluctuations in the water seal chamber. Clamping every four hours is not required, and chest tube milking is only done when there is an obstruction in the drainage flow inside the tube. Note, most facilities do not recommend milking the chest tube. 7. A 69-year-old female patient is diagnosed with adult respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. Which of the following conditions is associated with ARDS? A. Pulmonary congestion related to heart failure. B. Renal failure. C. Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. D. Respiratory alkalosis. Answer. C. 
Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Rationale. In non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, there is an increased permeability of the pulmonary capillaries that is not caused by any heart conditions. This problem eventually causes ARDS, respiratory alkalosis, heart failure, and renal failure do not lead to ARDS. 8. A 55-year-old patient is diagnosed with pneumothorax and is inserted a chest tube for drainage. When doing nursing rounds, the nurse notices that there is gentle bubbling in the suction control chamber. Which nursing action is appropriate? A. Clamp the chest tube and inform the doctor. B. Check for air leak. C. Increase the pressure of suctioning. D. No intervention required as gentle bubbling is expected. Answer. D. No intervention required as gentle bubbling is expected. Rationale. Gentle bubbling in the suction control chamber is an expected finding in a patient with pneumothorax. The bubbling should not be intermittent or vigorous. Rather, it needs to be continuous and gentle. Absence of bubbling may indicate either re-expansion of the affected lung or a blockage in the tubing. 9. A patient's endotracheal tube was removed an hour ago. The nurse monitors the patient and immediately alerts the physician if he or she has assessed that the patient develops a. One episode of pink tinge sputum. b. Respiratory rate of 27 cycles per minute. c. O2 sat of 95% on room air. D. Strider upon auscultation. Answer. D. Strider upon auscultation. Rationale. Strider is a coarse, high-pitched sound that can be heard when auscultating over the trachea. The presence of strider means that there is swelling in the airway, which puts the patient at high risk of obstruction of the airway and difficulty of breathing. Thus, the nurse needs to immediately report the finding to the doctor for immediate medical attention. 10. A public health nurse conducts a community health teaching on tuberculosis. Which of the following should the nurse include in the teaches the first sign of this respiratory condition? A. Bloody sputum and productive cough. B. Chest pain. C. Shortness of breath. D. Mucoid sputum and productive cough. Answer. D. Mucoid sputum and productive cough. Rationale. The first sign of tuberculosis is usually a productive cough accompanied by mucoid sputum. The other signs such as shortness of breath, bloody sputum, and chest pain can be considered as late signs of tuberculosis, which may mean extensive disease in lung cavitation. 11. A 50-year-old male patient is diagnosed with pulmonary edema. All of the following can become complications of this medical condition, except a. Abdominal edema. B. Pleural effusion. C. Ulcerative colitis. D. Liver failure. Answer. C. Ulcerative colitis. Rationale. If left untreated, pulmonary edema may cause edema of the abdominal cavity and lower extremities because pulmonary edema can further increase the pulmonary arterial pressure. The increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation may lead to the accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity which surrounds the lungs causing pleura effusion. There can also be increased pressure in the hepatic portal system, causing the liver to be congested and swollen, thereby unable to detoxify the blood as normal. 12. A 46-year-old hypertensive female patient was admitted 12 hours ago with severe pneumonia and has now developed pulmonary congestion. The nurse should expect the doctor to prescribe the following medications for this patient, except a. Antihypertensives, such as ramipril. B. Antibiotics, such as nitrofurantoin. C. Diuretics, such as furosemide. D. Anticholesterol drugs, such as simvastatin. Answer, B. Antibiotics, such as nitrofurantoin. Rationale, the pneumonia is the likely cause of pulmonary congestion, so the doctor will prescribe an antibiotic drug, however. Nitrofurantoin is inappropriate for this patient as this drug may actually worsen the pulmonary edema. To decrease the fluid that has accumulated in the heart and lungs, diuretics such as furosemide, Lasix, are usually administered. Hypertension may eventually lead to pulmonary edema, thus, antihypertensives may be required. For cardiogenic pulmonary edema, anticholesterol drugs might be prescribed to reduce the LDL or bad cholesterol that clog up the cardiac arteries. 13. A male COPD patient calls for the nurse and verbalizes that he is having difficulty of breathing and is starting to get anxious. Then nurse finds the patient in a slouched position on the bed. 
so the nurse elevates the head of the bed. What is the primary rationale for this nursing action? A. To promote expansion of the lungs. B. To increase the patient's comfort. C. To reduce the patient's anxiety. D. To facilitate pain relief of back muscles. Answer. A. To promote expansion of the lungs. Rationale. Head elevation helps improve the expansion of the lungs, enabling the patient to breathe more effectively. When the patient breathes better, he will feel less anxious and more comfortable. 14. A 45-year-old female patient with COPD has productive cough with thick phlegm. All of the following nursing interventions can facilitate the clearance of thick airway secretions for this patient, except a. Chest physiotherapy. b. Saline nebulization. c. Oxygen therapy. d. Suctioning. Answer. c. Oxygen therapy. Rationale. Chest physiotherapy involves using vibration and percussion techniques on the thorax to help dislodge thick airway mucus and help the patient expectorate it. Saline nebulization helps break down thick airway secretions. Suctioning helps to manually remove the secretions. Oxygen therapy aims to increase oxygen levels, not to remove secretions. 15. A senior staff nurse is mentoring a newly qualified nurse in the respiratory unit. The senior nurse tells the new staff member that COPD can be further distinguished into the following respiratory conditions, except a. Refractory asthma. b. Pneumonia. c. Emphysema. d. Chronic bronchitis. Answer. b. Pneumonia. Rationale. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD is an umbrella term that is divided into three specific respiratory problems, which include emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and refractory asthma. Pneumonia is a bacterial respiratory infection that is not classified as COPD. However, people with COPD are highly susceptible to infections such as pneumonia. 16. A community health nurse is conducting a health teaching on chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. The nurse should say that all of the following are causes of COPD, except a. History of lung cancer. b. Exposure to fumes. c. Tobacco smoking. d. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Answer. a. History of lung cancer. Rationale. Tobacco smoking is the number one cause of COPD. Exposure to chemical fumes and vapors may also cause COPD. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is a genetic disorder that is found as the cause of a small number of COPD cases. Lung cancer is not a direct cause of COPD, but it can be a complication of it. 17. A 42-year-old male patient is newly diagnosed with COPD. He is a long-term smoker. All of the following treatments may be incorporated in the care of this patient, except a. Smoking cessation. B. Oxygen therapy. C. Diet modification. D. Pulmonary rehabilitation. Answer. C. Diet modification. Rationale. Smoking cessation is an integral part of the nursing care plan for the patient, as this is the most likely cause of COPD. Oxygen therapy may be required, depending on his oxygen levels. Pulmonary rehabilitation is helpful in achieving the optimal lung capacity for this patient. Diet modification may not be a priority as it is unrelated to COPD. 18. A 54-year-old patient has coronary artery disease, CAD, and develops pulmonary edema. Which of the following medications can decrease the fluid accumulation in this patient's heart and lungs? A. Ramipril. B. Furosemide. C. Meripenem. D. Simvastatin. Answer. B. Furosemide. Rationale. To decrease the fluid that has accumulated in the heart and lungs, diuretics such as furosemide, Lasix, are usually administered. 19. A post thoracotomy patient is given epidural analgesia for pain relief. Which of the following findings should the nurse report to the doctor as it may indicate a complication of epidural analgesia for this patient? Answer. A. Respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute. Rationale. A respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute may indicate the start of respiratory depression, which is a serious complication of using epidural analgesia and requires immediate medical attention. 20. 
the nurse administers codeine to relieve the persistent intractable cough in a male client. The nurse informs the patient that she will reassess the patient's response to the medication. A. Within 4 hours. B. Within an hour. C. After 30 minutes. D. After 2 hours. Answer. C. After 30 minutes. Rationale. Coding is used to help with intractable cough. The patient must be reassessed after at least 30 minutes of administration of codeine as the onset of drug action occurs at this time. The peak concentration of codeine happens an hour after administration. 21. Pneumonia is a respiratory infection that occurs with which of the following pathological mechanisms in the lung? A. Inflammation. B. Effusion. C. Atelectasis. D. Bronchiectasis. Answer. A. Inflammation. Rationale. There are different types of pneumonia, but all of them have the common feature of inflammation in the lung parenchyma for the pneumonia to develop. The inflammation is caused by an invading organism, such as viruses or bacteria. 22. An 11 year old male patient is admitted to the emergency unit having a respiratory rate of 32 breaths per minute, afebrile, difficulty of breathing, and non productive cough. There is no family history of smoking. Which of the following is the likely respiratory condition of this patient? A. Emphysema. B. COPD. C. Acute asthma. D. Pneumonia. Answer. C. Acute asthma. Rationale. The patient is likely to have acute asthma, as he has tachypnea, shortness of breath and a non-productive cough. He is unlikely to have pneumonia if there is no productive cough and fever. The patient has no family history of smoking, and is too young to have COPD and emphysema. 23. The nurse conducts a physical assessment of a patient with shortness of breath and tachypnea. Upon chest auscultation, which of the following findings may indicate asthma? A. Normal breath sounds. B. Wheezes. C. Bilateral crackles. D. Strider. Answer. B. Wheezes. Rationale. Wheezes during inspiration and expiration are common signs of asthma. Crackles can be heard in patients with pneumonia or bronchitis, while strider may indicate swelling of the trachea and larynx. 24. A patient with asthma calls for the nurse and shows signs of difficulty of breathing. Upon further assessment, the patient seems to have a decreased expiratory volume. Which of the following drugs can help treat this acute problem? A. Oral steroids. B. Inhaled steroids. C. Beta adrenergic blockers. D. Bronchodilators. 25. A 60 year old male patient is admitted with long term productive cough, thick sputum, cyanotic nail beds, and swelling of the limbs. He mentions that he has been smoking since he was 15 years old, and usually smokes a pack of cigarettes per day. Which of the following medical conditions is he likely to have? A. Emphysema. B. Chronic bronchitis. C. Asthma. D. Acute respiratory distress syndrome. Answer. B. Chronic bronchitis. Rationale. Cyanosis of the nail beds, peripheral edema, chronic productive cough, and an extensive history of smoking can all support the diagnosis of chronic bronchitis. Peripheral edema and long-term cough are not usually associated with emphysema, asthma, or ARDS. This concludes 25 practice nursing questions for respiratory system. Join us at nursestudy.net for more tests, nursing care plans, and nursing study guides.